Ah, I should have known it would be you. Word reached me of a struggle with a small but well-armed band of trespassers. Forgive my comrades their hostility. Few come here uninvited, and fewer still with good intent. Now, tell me why you are here. So, you seek to stem the Dravanian tide with talk? A romantic notion. If you but knew the truth, the spark which lit the flames of this animosity, you would understand the futility of your quest. Shall I relate it to you? The sordid history my gift has shown me, that which the Holy See has taken such pains to suppress, was more than a millennium past when an Elizan tribe first sought to claim the lands of Kurthas as its home. Unfortunately for them, Kurthas was already home to dragonkind, and they were not inclined to make way for the invaders. Thus did a bloody war begin, a war which might well have rumbled on until one or the other side was exterminated, had it not been for the resolve of a single woman. That woman's name was Shiva. While those around her fought and died, she attempted to parley with the dragons, and in so doing discovered them to be possessed of profound intelligence and reason. The great worm Horace in particular so enchanted Shiva that she found herself growing to love the creature whom her people considered a monster. In the eyes of a near immortal dragon, however, the fleeting life of an Elizan is as that of a freshly cut rose. Scarce has the flower bloomed before it begins to fade and wither. Such melancholy musings plagued Trace Vulgar, who had found in Shiva an unexpected and beloved soulmate. He knew that all too soon, death would snatch her away from him. Unable to bear the thought of their separation, the maid bid the worm consume her, that their spirits might be entwined for eternity. Though loath to perform the deed, Hraesvelgar ultimately gave in to her plea, and soon thereafter the tale of their ill-fated love spread throughout the two warring factions. No more could they raise blade or claw against one another, knowing that the souls of their kin were so inextricably bound. In the days that followed, man and dragon learned to live in harmony, and together built a nation unlike any the world had ever known. For 200 years did this blissful age of peace continue, as it would to this day, had vilest envy not stirred in the hearts of the Elizin. It is said, that worms owe their longevity to the boundless reserves of vitality found within their eyes. And twas in this belief that a traitorous band of knights deceived their allies of some two centuries, and took by force that which they coveted. Nidhogg, he who now stands poised to unleash his wormlings upon Ishgard, was the great dragon who lost an eye to Elizan treachery. And until he prizes it from the hands of the traitor's progeny, no amount of conciliatory words will stay his fury. You are wrong, Lady Iceheart. Lest you misunderstand, I do not doubt your vision of the past. Tis true that Nidhogg greatly desired to reclaim the Eye. Indeed, it was for that very reason that I kept it with me as I roamed the land, attempting to draw him away from the city. Good. 
gods. Until recently, Nidhogg seemed unable to resist its allure and pursued me relentlessly. Needless to say, that is no longer the case. Now, it would seem, he has fixed his attention on Ishgard itself, though he knows full well the Eye does not reside there. You believe he targets the capital for another reason? I believe reason has all but left him. Through the Eye, I feel much of what Nidhogg feels and the dragon's thirst for vengeance will not be quenched by aught less than a sea of blood. If Nidhogg is indeed lost to reason, might we not seek an audience with Hreisvelger instead? He has thus far shown no inclination to aid in the invasion of Ishgard and may yet welcome our efforts to broker a peace. You still believe that a peaceable solution can be found? Very well. I will take you to him. Our road will lead us to Dravania, the homeland of Dragonkind. There we shall ascend unto the clouds, where Hraesvulgar resides. Is aught amiss, my friend? I sense the many battles are beginning to take their toll. Rest a while. And should you lose sight of us, Dravania lies beyond the mountains to the west. Curious. The vestiges of thy mistress's blessing are not as faint as once they were. Thy will to succeed grants thee unusual fortitude. But will it be enough? <laughs> 